Hello, reporter room investigators. It's great to see you. I am so glad to be with you on this Sunday night. Come on in, come on in. We have so much stuff to talk about on the Brian Kohlberger case today. We're going to be talking about a lot of different stuff. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jane. You guys know I like to get started right away. And um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. My job is to investigate crimes, potential suspects, and criminals, and show you how to consider suspects, crime scenes, and evidence. Now, BK, Brian Kohlberger, is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And everything I'm sharing is my opinion, and opinions are not facts. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let me put that up. And give this video a thumbs up so I know you were here. If you'd like to join me in the top chat, you just need to be subscribed. And come on up and join me. I'm anxious to read your comments. This is Reporter Room with Jessica Della Davies. So I'm really anxious to uh, dig into all of this. Um, let me say hello to chat. We have Mike is here. Jane is here. Holly's here. Unspoken Heart is here. Tara's here. Great to see you guys. Okay, so today we're going to be going through the various warrants that law enforcement has served on a variety of different businesses. We're going to look at them now with the new lenses that we all have on with all of the information that we've collected since these warrants first went out. We're also going to be talking about Dylan, the roommate, Will she be called as a witness to the stand? And we're going to be talking about Officer Brett Payne. And we're going to take a look at the account known as Papa Rogers. Was this Brian Kohlberger or was this law enforcement in there baiting the hook and dropping lines in? And I'm going to be talking about this case in terms of Brian Kohlberger. He is the only one who's been arrested, jailed, and indicted. So, of course, I'm going to be talking about this case in terms of him. But he is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, it's been widely reported that BK purchased a K-bar knife and sheath from Amazon months ago, months before the 1122 King Road house. So this puts the date of the K-Bar knife purchase, according to Dateline NBC, around, and Fox News also reported this, around April of 2022. Now, this K-Bar knife sheath purchase is yet another piece of circumstantial evidence against BK. And as you well know, a K-Bar knife sheath was left behind at the crime scene underneath and to the side of Maddie Mogan. This knife sheath snapped had DNA, which matched one person and only one person, and that was Brian Kohlberger. And it wasn't in the million, and it wasn't in the billion. It was in the octillion range. So let me go ahead and pull this up. So let's, um, let me say hello to chat. So we have, uh, this is our head mod. This is Sixth Sense Amelia. Thank you to our mods. Hello, Jewel. Good to see you. Okay. And I want to thank our producers, George, Sasha, Angel, and our channel members. Without you, we would not have a channel. You guys are awesome. If you would like to become a channel member, you just need to hit the join button, which is right next to the subscribe button, and your name will appear in every live stream and video that I do. I usually begin adding names within a week of your signing up. And if you see the blue check marks. So let's go through a little bit about, about this whole Papa Roger thing. And is this, was this BK talking to us in the chat? Um, so we have so much stuff to dig into. I have multiple packages. I have four packages and a possible fifth, just depending on time, how time goes so that, we have the a credible source that BK purchased the K-Bar knife in April of 2022. And we're going to be talking about the Daylight NBC and um, Papa Rogers. And I just want to show you why I think this was 
either BK or law enforcement. I'm leaning toward it being BK, but this post here, I'm going to show you several point, posts. It says, of the evidence released, the, I'm watching my words, N weapon has been con consistent as a large fixed blade knife. This leads me to believe they found the sheath. This evidence was released prior to autopsies. Look at the date on that. That's November 30th. Law enforcement did not tell us about that knife sheath. They didn't tell us that for another month. So how did Papa Roger know that they found the knife sheath? So this has to either be a member of law enforcement or BK was in our chat. Full disclosure, I was in this chat. So let's go forward a little bit more. Let's look at the next one. If I can get it to go forward. Okay. He says here again, November 30th, I believe the K came from the high side of the house. They were covered in blood after the attack. So the high side, that would be the house sat with the first and second story here, right? The high side would have been the back end, which was set up on the hill, which was the second and third story, which is an add-on, right? So that would be that he knew that whoever did this came in either through the patio doors, which is where we know that Dylan saw BK exiting, or came in through the third floor. So he is telling us this on November 30th. Again, this was not released to us yet. We didn't know this yet. So how did this account know this? Let's look at the next one. Okay, here we are, December 20th. This is a full 10 days before BK was arrested. And it says a knife is a very risky weapon. If you know you are going to do away, I'm watching my words, four people, do we think the SK had another weapon such as a stun gun or a gun? So who had the gun? Who had the gun? BK did, right? That was one of the things that they found. We're going to go through just looking at everything. We're going to go through everything, you know, what, what all they found when they arrested him, but they found it, I believe in his car. So maybe it was in the Albrightsville inside the house, but I believe it was in the car. So was he Papa Roger? If you think he was Papa Roger, put a one in the chat. If you think he was that law enforcement was Papa Roger, put a two in the chat because this was obviously somebody. And then look at the picture, the avatar that he selected. He selected one that I do believe resembles himself. And then Roger harkens back to, to Elliot Rogers, right? All right. So let me, let's see, let me check in with chat so I don't get behind. And we're going to, we have a lot to stuff to get into. I have uh, four packages, not counting this one, plus a fifth possible one if we have time. Um, Holly says he wanted to know what law enforcement knew. Yeah. Bob says, hey, Bob, Papa Roger was not law enforcement. They would have no reason for such a thing. The only reason I could think of, because obviously this was somebody, because these posts were made on November 20th, especially the first one that I showed you, right? This one where he's talking about the what that knife sheath being left behind. I, you know, that's the only that's the only other person I could think of who would know about this, right? Jewel says. He wanted to be the controller in all of this. Very interesting. Jane says he's leaking information. Let's see what you guys say in the poll. You guys are saying one. Put a one in the chat if you think it was BK. Put a two in the chat if you think it was law enforcement. Jane thinks it was BK. Tara thinks it was BK. Hi, Renee. Renee thinks it was BK. Mike says someone tried saying they said the gun was his dad's. I never heard the police announce that. I'm going to go through it. I got to go through it. No, they did. They did announce it. Um, brother Mike is here too. We have two mics. One, he was Papa looks like him. Yeah, it does look like him, right? Naomi says one. I almost missed you, Jory. Sorry about that. Hi, Jory. Jory says one. Holly says one. Hi, Natalie. Natalie says one. Lynette says 
thought so at the time, but possible that it was law enforcement. Okay. That's, you know, I'm, I'm leaning that way too, but I want to know what you guys think. Just in going through the old posts of Papa Rogers and then juxtaposing that of, to against when we found out about things, this was weeks before this post was posted on Facebook weeks before we knew about the knife sheath. Mike says, yep, he was trying to brag. Bob says, there is not a chance it was law enforcement. And Jazz is here. Good to see you. Let's see. Tara says, I never heard anything about a, yeah, there was one found. I'm going to go through that in just a second. Yeah, this is why it's good to like go back through everything. This is, this is what I do. This is what I did in the Alex Murdoch case. Once we get more information, I will go back through and dig everything up that I can find and then re-put the puzzles pieces back together with the new information that we know. We have a one from Kalo. Enja says one. Holly says, hey, unspoken heart stillness says one. What a pretty uh, name. Shan, I hope I'm saying it right, says one. Eliza says one. Hey, Claire. Claire says one. Bob says one. Claire says one. Okay, so I'm not seeing hardly any twos. And if you don't know, this is Amelia. She is our head mod. Thank you to all of our mods, channel members, and subscribers. Holly is as welcome. Please hit the thumbs up. Oh, I always forget to say that. Yeah, please hit the thumbs up. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And Mike says, would it make sense to take his dad's? <coughs> they took, whoops, wouldn't make sense to take his dad's. No, they, right. No, and I, I do, I agree. All right, so let me grab, let's start grabbing packages. Let me take this down. Oh, my computer's busting at me. And let me just remove it. And we'll go ahead and grab the first one. Okay, so we're going to talk about things that tie BK. Okay, so we, we as I just shared with you most, let me go back. This is Outkick if you haven't read them. Um, we're going to talk about... Um, the dateline. Okay. So the dateline people are out, have always asked me like, where you know, what are, what are your sources in the live streams? I go through with the sources with you guys. So you can look on them. You can look them up. You can read them for yourself in your own time. So dateline aired a special called the killings on King road. It was a series published unreleased details regarding BK and the four victims, Maddie, Kaylee, Zana, and Ethan. Now, most notably the report showed that BK purchased a K-Bar knife and sheath from Amazon seven months before the crimes took place at 1122 King Road. Now, the model K-Bar sounds familiar to you because that is the K-Bar sheath left behind at the crime scene, and this is the same sheath that had BK's DNA on it. So people can say, oh, we don't want to count the DNA. Okay, well, how about a receipt that shows that he bought it and you have the DNA on it. See, that's where I think the jury is going to start to feel like things are starting to add up. So it's likely now that we have a record of BK actually purchasing this most critical piece of evidence. And I say likely because I didn't vet Dateline sources personally, but I do know that they that they do vet their sources. Meet Papa Rogers. Now, law enforcement so this is interesting. According to the Dateline special, law enforcement officers are convinced that BK is behind the Papa Rogers account. So Rogers, as I just showed you, he had psychic-like predictions, right? As if he was inside of the investigation or was at the crime scene. This is why it has to have been a member of law enforcement or BK. Because who... This was knife sheath came up by Papa Rogers a full month before they ever announced to us about the knife sheath. So I just think it's very, very interesting. And I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, Rogers also went silent. 
He stopped posting the day after BK arrested. Now, since then, other people have popped up. Hey, I'm Papa Rogers on Facebook with new accounts, but the original account. So did this person just lose access to Facebook? Did he lose interest in the case or was he arrested? What do you guys think? Um, I don't know if they will, law enforcement will even need this, but I think, you know, they, they might. So in addition to the sheath, authorities have BK cell phone pinging at the, near the crime scene location 12 times leading up to the crime. They also seized hair samples, fabric with red stains. We still don't know. You know, there was a, there's a pet hair sample. We don't know whose pet this matched to. Whose hairs were they? Were they just random people or were they victims from the crime scene? And the red stains, I don't think those are going to match up to any of the victims. I think he was probably very, very careful. But was it his own? Was he injured? And that goes back to the enhanced photos I showed you two weeks ago, where I showed you the what I believe to be a cut on his right wrist. And some people thought there was a bruising. I didn't think there was, but if you did, that's okay. For those of you that are new to this channel, we don't all have to agree. What I try to do is bring you all the information so you guys can decide for yourselves what you think. I'm not here to convince you one way or the other of, of, of what to think. I'm just going to bring you everything and you guys can decide what you want to think, what you don't. And we don't all have to agree. All opinions are welcome. All I ask is that we just share them respectfully. So circumstantial case, this is going to be a circumstantial case. There's not going to be a video of him doing it. Okay. Um, the circumstantial evidence is that going to be enough? I guess we'll find out. So let me grab this one. Oh, let me catch up with chat too. Let me grab this and then I'll catch up with chat for a second. Okay. Let's go through the warrant. Let me catch up with chat and we're going to go through the warrant. Um, let's see where I'm at. I'm... Lynn Ann says she thinks BK was Papa Roger. Bob says the internet is just too easy to trace the origins. Law, law enforcement would know this better than anyone. I would be curious to find the origin of the Papa Rogers account. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Absolutely. The jewel says, Holly, remember the Zodiac said he did similar, wrote to the police, taunted them. I reckon BK thinks so. His, yeah. And so did BTK. Dennis Rader also taunted police and that's how they got him too. BK stopped driving around after the crime. We don't know, right? That's a big question. You know, Ann Taylor put BK in the car and I've told you guys, I think she did because she had to put him in the car because of the phone pings, because of the CCTV camera footage. So did he continue enjoying long drives after he was arrested or did everything stop. What do you guys think? And Jazz says, I believe BK was indeed Papa Rogers as a couple of his comments on the page seemed very arrogant. Yep. That was a comment that I heard a lot about Papa Rogers in the chat room. People were annoyed. He was eventually removed from our chat room by the moderators. Lead with love says, give me shivers when a criminal taunts people. Yeah. We had no idea. We had, we just thought he was just a really annoying person that was, you know, spreading, you know, rumors and, and cre just stirring the pot because he was um, kind of a know-it-all in the chat. And people were asking him, how do you know this stuff? Well, now, you know, we know. So and does, does think that he was. Some of those, a couple of comments on the page seem very arrogant. Holly says that's exactly right. He likes taunting law enforcement, likes to confuse them just for kicks. Arlene says, yes, I think he was injured. Thank you for that. TJB, hello, nice to see you, says it's written. How it's written is the same as the survey BK did previously, if you compare them. I am doing that right now, TJB. I am juxtaposing his comments as Papa Roger, the comments, I'm not saying they're him, you decide for yourself, the comments as Papa Rogers, but I'm juxtaposing that with comments that we know were BK, that he did as part of a survey, as part of his job as part of his, I'm sorry, education, getting his master's degree in criminology. Brother Mike says, I think he, BK thinks he's smarter than everyone else. I agree. I think he does have a superior, superiority complex, not inferiority, but superiority. Hey, Farrah Gamma. 
Farrah says, Koberger, Papa Rogers, also left that K-Bar knife sheath under Mogan as a uh, kind of a signature marker to demonstrate his superiority. Furthermore, Koberger would have evolved into an SK. I think so, too. Um, I think that th the perpetrator who did this would have kept going if they had not been stopped. I think this was their first time. I do think it's interesting that after BK was arrested, you know, uh, Grizzly Crime, crime I, you know, Gisela made a great point. She said before he arrived into the area, they had no crimes like this for eight years leading up to this crime. And once he was arrested, it all stopped. So, but Michelle says she does not think that he did this. Fair enough. If Arlene says, I also believe he was Papa Roger. Tara says, I don't think law enforcement would come into a chat and give information out like Papa Roger did. Great point. Great point. And Jazz agrees. Holly says hello. Michelle says, I don't think that the white car is BK. Well, Michelle, I would urge you to watch last week's video because I took you guys down through. A bit. Last week I did a live stream. In the week before I did live stream. And I took you guys through how law enforcement narrowed in on BK and that car. All of the things. We went through the affidavit piece by piece, bit by bit. And I would urge you to go through the last last week and the week before his live streams to get everything um, that we already covered. I'm not going to cover it today because my viewers have already have already already are aware of it. Plus, I already have videos up about it. TJB says, as as if law enforcement would do that, it's absurd. Well, unless they were trying to, you know, dangle some bait to see if whoever did this would come into the chat. That was the only thing I could think of. But then why only be in one chat? Why not be in, in a bunches of them? And Jazz says, I think he's more intelligent than anyone. Sadly, it will be his downfall. And Holly says, a silver Elantra similar to BK belonged to his friend, I think. Bob says, it's quite a reach. Leave evidence behind when you understand DNA. That is a theory, though. Um, I do think it's, you know, worth noting that he could have left this behind as a calling card. And the only reason I think that it's less likely than more likely that it was left behind intentionally was because of the DNA. And also because... I think he went back for it. That's why the phone was pinging there around 9 a.m. that morning. Lead with Love says, usually there would be gossip coming out of the jail, but crickets. Oh, I'm sure he's being very, very quiet. One, we have a one. Okay, so hopefully everybody got to get in on that poll that wanted to. Let's go back to this. Hey, Pam, good to see you. All right, let's go through this. This is ABC News, and we're going to go through um, the Amazon Click history. Right? Let's go through what they, what what they what they believe they they went through his Click information, and they were specifically looking for knives, according to the search warrant. So this isn't just me saying this. This is a search warrant. Okay. So in a series of search warrant documents posted, this says late Tuesday. Now this was article was put up in September of 2023. So this would have been early September, 2023, end of August, early September. So in the search warrant that was posted, investigators, um, it was, they dated it September 8th, if you're looking for it. Authorities requested the purchase history and payment methods details for an Amazon customer whose identity had been redacted. So, I mean, there's only one person ar arrested and indicted. So, and this was 2023. So I'm going to say that it's probably BK. The warrant also included a request for, quote, all detailed customer click activity pertaining to knives and accessories, as well as a long list of information that could flesh out the customer's full shopping movements and interests on the site, including items saved to the cart, suggestions for future purposes, and items reviewed by that customer. Oh my gosh. So they had his computer, right? Now, the Moscow PD has been very, very quiet. They did not immediately respond to ABC News. Of course, ABC News wanted a comment. 
but the warrant requests all details for this account for two very precise time periods, March 20th of 2022 through March 30th of 2022 and November 1st of 2022 through December 6th of 2022. So what is making them zero in on those dates? It was served mid-May, several months after BK's initial arrest, and a week before the North Idaho grand jury handed down an indictment on BK. So the grand jury probably saw some of this. The requested data was received by law enforcement. Oh, nope, they didn't get it. So the, they indicted him without this. Was received by law enforcement in the beginning of July, inventoried and placed into evidence at the Moscow Police Department, according to the affidavit included in court documents. Also included in the newly posted documents are the search warrants for Apple and PayPal slash Venmo. And the, again, those account identities were redacted. So they want proof that he was shopping for it. They want proof from Amazon that he purchased it. And they also want the receipts from Apple, PayPal, Venmo, anything like that to prove how he would have paid for it, right? Because we know he wasn't paying cash on Amazon. In the Apple search, authorities requested extensive account information, including all devices, addresses, and numbers linked to that account, the means and source of payment, and all emails associated with the account and attachments in order to locate any materials referencing the planning or commission of these quadruple crimes. This is according to the warrant. The warrant also requested the contents of any instant messages. So they were like going all in on this associated with the Apple account, as well as all of the contents of all the files and other records stored on iCloud, Apple, Venmo, PayPal. So they wanted to show not only that he bought it on Amazon, but that he paid for it. Right. And then they, they took that and then they dug in some more and then they wanted to know what records were stored on iCloud and the warrant for the Apple search was served on August the 1st. And the data was received by law enforcement on August the 9th. This is according to the Moscow police detectives affidavit. So it feels like they're honing in on that. And we're going to dig into some more of this in just a second. Let me catch up with chat. Um, let's see where we are. Mike says, lead, he's alone in his cell in max security. He, I'm sure, has is um, being protected, right? Because he would be, um, you know, he's... Uh, become infamous from this. So he, he's being guarded very carefully. The jewel says, notice how after BK was arrested, it all went quiet. Exactly. Papa Rogers went silent until I think, you know, hoaxers came up, you know, a few weeks later and started recreating the account, but it was a different account. It wasn't the same one. Um, Arlene Wiley says, BK trusts no one. He won't talk in jail. I don't think he will either. I'm sure his attorneys have told him not to. Jane thinks that the knife sheath was left behind on an accident. I think so too. Um, Mike says jailers probably have big strict orders not to mention him. TJB says when you look at it all collectively, it's him. Leading with love says it's it's a, see a very small jail. There's always gossip, true, false, but there's none coming out. Yo, it's been very, very quiet. So let's talk about this documents for these, for this PayPal. So the documents for the PayPal Venmo warrant show that authorities asked for records specifically from that June 22nd of 2022 to December 31st of 2022. So they were, they had a, a pretty good thing of where they wanted those records from. It was, you know, the judge made him, they couldn't just go anywhere that they wanted, but they wanted to get, and be, keep in mind, he was arrested on December 30th, right? So requesting that subscriber details like billing information, payment records, all financial transactions, and to whom these payments went, geolocation data, 
screen names, and all associated email addresses and phone numbers. This is why I think that if someone else was doing this with him, law enforcement would have rounded them up and they would be under arrest also because they're going through, once they got the email addresses, do you think they searched out the emails from there? Oh, I bet they did. Law enforcement received the data on August 1st. This is why Ann Taylor probably came off of that October. Remember, we were all supposed to go to trial, I think, in, in October, right? And he waived his right to a speedy trial because all this data is coming in. Law enforcement received the data on August 1st, a week after the warrant was served, according to the affidavit from a forensic detective with the Moscow PD. An inventory was prepared and information was placed into evidence at the police department. Both PayPal and Venmo declined to comment when reached by ABC News, which is good. You know, it's supposed to be a gag order. Representatives from Amazon and Apple declined to comment. So... This is what the prosecutors are alleging. Prosecutors are alleging that in the wee hours of the morning of November 13th of 2022, BK broke into the 1122 King Road house and did away with Ethan, Maddie, Zana, and Kaylee. And after a six-week hunt, and what did you guys think about Ann Taylor saying she didn't know how they found her client? Because I walked you guys through how law enforcement said, law enforcement told us how they zeroed in on BK. So I, I don't know. Did you find that disingenuous? Do you think she's trying to just find that one juror that she can, you know, get on her side to find him not guilty or hang the jury? What do you guys think? So after a six-week hunt, police zeroed in on BK as a suspect. They tracked the white Hyundai Elantra, right? The cell phone data. Recovering what authorities said was his DNA on the snap of the K-bar knife sheath underneath and to the side of Maddie. He was indicted on, De on December 30th. He was arrested. I'm sorry. He was indicted in May. He was arrested on December 30th. So he wasn't indicted until the grand jury met. And then he was charged with all four counts. So do you think they're going to do this case one crime at a time or are they just going to do all four at the same time? Now, BK has pled not guilty, um, and here is his alibi. I don't, I don't, if you can call it that, I mean, I don't know. I, I think she had to put him in the car. What do you guys think? I think Ann Taylor had to put him in the car. She says BK was out driving during the late night and early mornings on the night in question. And that he had a long habit of enjoying long drives. Okay, so my question to that is, if he had a long habit of enjoying long drives, did this habit continue? Did the habit continue or did it stop? We're going to talk about Dylan in just a second, but I want to um, talk about BK, let me ch catch up with chat for a second because we have a lot to get into. Um, is anyone connected with this case with the initials PR? I was racking my brain, Angela. I was just trying to think what could PR stand for. I saw somebody put, um, at some point they had put down police reconnaissance that, that they could, that maybe it could be that, but I don't, not that I know of. It doesn't mean that there isn't someone, but not that I know of. Um, Lynn Ann says, how creepy this cereal better not get free. Mike says, probably strict orders not to talk about him, I'm sure. Hi, DM. DM says, if we understand how law enforcement got to BK, shouldn't his attorney be able to figure that out? Right? I sat there just, you know, <laughs> with, I just could not believe it because I had just done a live stream that weekend and then she gets up in court and says she doesn't know how they found figured out it was her client i'm like we just walked th through chat and i together how they zero we did this together to see how they zeroed in on him so i'm like thinking if i could put it together with you guys if we could all put it together surely her team i mean you guys are really smart but I mean, her team is smart too, if we could figure it out. So I don't know. I just felt like that was like somewhat 
disingenuous. It was kind of like, oh, woe is me. I don't know if I can get through everything. I don't know. And maybe it really is a lot. And maybe she doesn't have that much help. I mean, they're very busy filing motions trying to get that grand jury indictment thrown out. Mike says, I also think he left the sheath as a calling card. He is so smart. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on this. Yeah, I don't know. And it, it's okay that we don't all agree. We don't all have to agree on this. Michelle says, get a clue. Has great video out about a white car. I believe that, but I just don't consider, and I don't know who get a clue is, but um, I just go with more sources that like vet, vet who they're talking to and vet the information more. So I already went through this, Michelle, on another live stream. We did this two weeks ago. We went through everything and you're welcome to go through it. I would urge you to go through it and just see for yourself how we got to where we got with him being in that car. And Jazz says, if he's ever freed, he won't be welcome at my house for tea. Gee, I don't blame you. His arrogance and mental, this is the jewel, his arrogance and mental illness will bring him undone. I don't know if there's any mental illness. And we were trying to figure out with the chat last Sunday during the live as to whether or not he, you know, what was the medical thing that both the defense and the prosecution agreed to leave out. And the only thing I could come up with was the fact that we found out that he did have some eating issues. It was a disorder. And um, so anyway, that's the only thing I could think about that, that I could think of that I, that we know about that maybe there's something we don't where the prosecution wouldn't want to use that because it really would be irrelevant to what happened at 1122 King Road. Let me do a couple more questions and comments, and then we're going to get, dig into this. We have three more packages, and I have another one behind that if we have time. Jane says no one would leave that behind on purpose. So it's okay if we don't all agree. If some of you guys think it's a calling card, that's fine. If some of you guys think it was left by accident, that's fine too. We don't all have to agree. Um, Arlene says, BK thinks he's smarter than anyone else, but is being proved wrong. Mike says, why can't Ann, I'm sure he's talking about Ann Taylor, figure it out. Lots of laughs. An officer found his car and they researched the owner and it led to everything mentioned. Yeah, I, we, I walked you guys um, through the whole thing. We went through it together, so I don't know. Agree, agree. This is our mod head mod here, Amelia. Thank you so much for all you do. Uh, yeah, please give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. All right, let's go through this because we have a lot of stuff to dig into. So over 60, 60 search warrant applications have been filed by the Moscow Police Department and have been unsealed. So these are just the ones that we know about. This is Inside Edition reporting this including six seeking information about the sale of the K-Bar knife. And we know Dateline NBC and Fox News both reported out that the K-Bar knife was purchased in April of 2022. So new details are emerging. So let's go through these search warrants together and see if together what we come up with, what new information we come up with. So we're going to relook at these search warrants now with everything that we've learned since this information came out. So this would have been Judge John Judge that approved these six search warrant. Oh, no, it's a female. Okay, so we don't know who it is. Establishing grounds. So it was the same judge that approved all six of the applications, but not Judge John Judge, who's currently overseeing the case. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder who it was. All right. So let's look at the, so applications were filed prior to the arrest of BK, sought information from five different realtors, real retailers, Amazon, Walmart, Blue Ridge knives, K-Bar knives, and eBay. So they started out wide, right? Looking where he purchased that K-Bar knife from. There were two, two different, applications submitted to eBay. So the eBay search warrant, let's go through that. The warrants instructed a retailer to provide information about any individual who had purchased a K-Bar full-size U.S. military core fighting knife or K-Bar 
1217S. That's the one that was found, found underneath and to the side of Maddie. So they didn't find the knife. They just found the sheath. So now we're going to talk about Brett Payne. Um, Brett Payne was the responding officer from the Moscow Police Department. Uh, people have been saying, oh, he didn't have enough experience to do this. Well, I think Officer Payne probably agreed because what happened? They brought in the Idaho State Police and the FBI and the FBI showed up with 30 agents right away, right out of the gate. They immediately brought in. And I had somebody asking me last week, when did they find the knife sheath? It was found that day, the day they responded to the crime scene and officer Brett Payne talked about it. So the sheath was later processed, had the K-Bar USMC and the United States Marine Corps Eagle Globe and anchor insignia stamped on the outside. This is what officer Payne wrote in the affidavit. And we already went through this in another live stream. So I'm not going to go through the affidavit again. Um, but if you haven't seen that, you'll want to see, check that out next. Okay. So for eBay, the first warrant is requesting information on any individual, anyone. Okay. So they were casting a wide net of, of the, the sheath or knife after January 1st of 2022. So they went back to January 1st of 2022. And this happened on November 13th of 2022. So they went all the way back looking. So they were casting a wide net. The account information for the above named individuals, entities on eBay or affiliate websites, including but not limited to contact information, billing information, account opening dates, account closing dates, and other information retained in connection with the identified accounts. So they got every single person who purchased this knife on eBay. They got all of them and went through it. So I think that's really, really interesting. That's a lot of manpower right there. Order details and purchase history for all transactions conducted by the above named individuals, entities on eBay or any, any eBay affiliated storefront web store, including IP address information for purchases made. That is a really wide net. They also got payment information and through eBay or eBay supported platforms. And you recall a moment ago, I told you about PayPal, Venmo, Apple. So they were looking not only to prove that it was purchased. Ultimately, it was learned that he purchased the knife on Amazon. All customer interaction records between eBay and the above named individuals, entities, and the representatives to include call notes, call recordings, emails, or written correspondence. This is why I don't think he had an accomplice. I think they would have got the accomplice by now. They were casting such a wide net for all of this information initially, and then they just narrowed it down. Um. So eBay did comply with that warrant and investigators turned in a second application the same day, seeking information about 13 specific eBay users. So they narrowed it down from all the people down to just 13 people. Two of those users were listed as living in Washington and one in Idaho and one in Pennsylvania. So BK is a Pennsylvania native. If you don't know, he'd been attending Washington State University in Pullman, Washington, when police alleged that he did this crime. All right. We're going to go through the Amazon one also. And I have some information on the roommates. We're going to go through that together as well. Let me catch up with chat for a second because you guys are very smart. Um, you always have great comments. The jewel says he lost controlling aspects of this case, case, including Papa Rogers. We're going to talk more about Papa Rogers in a second. He showed his sick hand and I believe, and Jazz says, I can't wait to see all of the items BK bought. Well, we know he bought that knife from Amazon. That's been reported out by Fox news and Dateline NBC. Amazon info is going to be very, very helpful. Yeah. I think not only just having the info of, the fact that he bought it from Amazon, but also having the receipt of how he paid for it, showing that it was indeed him, you know, will just be that little bit of extra because it is a capital case. I think juries are going to be, a jury's going to be expecting that. 
Mike thinks that Ann Taylor is playing dumb. She's just going to milk it and tell BK to stall. So the story dies down in the public eye. Well, now they're trying to move the venue. They want to move it out of, um, out of Moscow, Idaho. They feel like the jury will be tainted there. They don't think they can get a fair trial. What do you guys think? If you think that BK can get a fair trial in Moscow, Idaho, put a one in the chat. If you think BK cannot get a fair trial and that it needs to be moved to another location in Idaho, put a two in the chat. Because Ann Taylor may be right about this. And she's only doing her job. I just want to say that. she. I mean, her job is to cast doubt on the case. Jules says, law enforcement have so much on him. Yeah, we're going to go through. I have so much more. And then after this, I have stuff on Dylan. We're going to be talking about Dylan in a second. Be very interested to know. Mike says, I guarantee there are fibers in the 1122 King Road house found in Brian's possession. Well, that goes back to, we still don't know. There's so much we don't know. Those hairs that they found, human hairs and animal hairs, who did they belong to? Hey, Rosalind. Rosalind says, it's annoying when content creators lie on their thumbnail for YouTube views. Well, I'm sure it is annoying, Rosalind, but I'm sure you're not talking about this channel. Um, Lead with Love says, my search history would scare the devil. Probably all the, yeah, I know. We all have her search history, but they were looking for receipts and proof that he bought this knife. They had, they, you know, they had to prove that he had this knife to, to make it a capital case, in my opinion. And we did do Papa Rogers. If you came in late, Rosalind, you can back up the thing and you can still watch it. I talked about Papa Roger and we're going to talk about more, that more. And, um, but we're we have a lot to go through. So if you can back it up, I'm sorry you arrived late. Um, yeah, Bob's like, who did that? Because for those of you that came, were here on time, you know we already did some a lot of Papa Roger stuff. But you can back it up. Um, Jane says going through discovery is going to be all consuming. Yeah, it is. See to it. Case nine says, I predict his criminal activity will be his ultimate downfall. I bet he completed it and discarded unedited copies of in the neighbor's trash cans. I don't know, but I know when he got arrested, he was literally found. Law enforcement sat there and watched him walking his own personal trash down to the neighbor's trash bins to throw it out. So that had to be frustrating to just be sitting there watching that. But when they arrested him, he was in the kitchen wearing those gloves, separating out his trash from his parents' trash. And then law enforcement had seen him walking that down and putting it into neighbor's trash bins. You can say what you want about whatever the reason is. He has OCD. He wears gloves. Okay. But do you separate out your own trash from your parents' trash and then take your garbage can? And that remember, those houses in all Brightsville, this wasn't a condo where the trashes are right next to each other. These houses were spread out. He had to walk down to the neighbor's trash and put his trash in there. And they sat there and watched him do it. They watched him cleaning his car in the middle of the night with bleach, wearing medical grade gloves. Again, cleaning your car, not a big deal. Cleaning with bleach? I don't know. I don't clean my car with bleach. Maybe Armor All, some Windex, not bleach. And then I don't do it in the middle of the night at my parents' house wearing medical grade gloves. But, you know, again, this is going to be circumstantial. It's not going to be one thing. It's not just going to be one thing that law enforcement shows. It's going to be cumulative thing after thing, which is why we're going through these search warrants. John Doman. Oh, what a cool name. Says BK is mal just a creep getting fired. Set him off. The jewel says exactly. She's trying to paint a narrative. Apple has my Tara says Apple has always known, been known for not giving out information to the police. So I would like to know how that's working out for the police. Well, they tried to find out. Hey, Kami, good to see you. LB says, no wonder he's stalling the case. He's toast. All right. Well, let's get back to this because we have multiple packages. I have information on Dylan coming up, more information on the um, Papa Rogers. We started with that today because um, you guys know I like to get right into it. So the Amazon warrant requested the same information as the first eBay warrant. Okay. So there was the same thing, but the Walmart warrant sought different information about individuals who either made, 
who made either of those same purchases after January 1st. So man, they were, let's go through that. Okay. So that warrant, this is the Walmart warrant requested that all open and closed accounts, all records pertaining to the individuals or business entities, entities identified in this letter, whether held jointly or severally or as a trustee or fiduciary, as well as custodian, executor, guardian, as well as other entities. So everybody, right? Everybody, any entities that might have a financial interest, including all accounts in which these individuals had signatory authority and the right of withdrawal, these records should include. Again, I think that they were very, very thorough, which is why I think he acted alone. I think if there had been an accomplice, there was such a wide net cast here. I think they would have rounded up the accomplice. So they wanted signature cards, statement, data, monthly account statements, identification of the name assigned on all debit cards on the account, deposits and supporting documentation, including but not limited to evidence of cash, canceled deposit checks front and back, transfers from other accounts, including full account numbers, names, and other credit information. Wow. This is like, this is such a wide net that they got. They wanted checks. This is just Walmart. This doesn't count what they asked for eBay, Amazon. This is just Walmart. Checks and other withdrawals, including but not limited to canceled checks, front and back withdrawals, offsets, evidence of cash withdrawals, transfers from other accounts, including account number, name, and other debit information. So they were looking. Was anybody else involved? Nobody else has been indicted. Wire transfers in and out, including wire instructions and evidence of requester, if possible. Evidence of cash transactions and identifying information of individuals conducting cash transactions. Remember I told you that the defense team was going to look for a straw man? And we saw this in the Casey Anthony case, right? They put up Kay Kaylee's Grandpa Casey's dad, George Anthony, was put up as the straw man by Jose Baez. And for everybody who says attorneys have to always tell you the truth, they have to tell you what they believe is true or what they think is true. But it doesn't mean that their truth is the truth, right? So because Jose Baez claimed that George Anthony did it, and I don't think it, most people believe that. Um, Kaylee was, Casey was found not guilty of doing away with Kaylee. So it worked. So I think that the prosecution was trying to get out in front of this. They didn't want the defense team to be able to put up a straw man to say, this is the person who really did it because look, here's receipts or payments. They got everything. And after they got gathered all this, that's when they put in for this to become a capital punishment case. They got the identification of senders or recipient bank, full account number, full of names, on the transfers, online transfers, teller transfers, and other transfers. I mean, this was a, this was huge. Okay, so now let's go to the warrants because this had some notable additions. So they wanted even more from the Blue Ridge knives. They wanted specifically that K-bar knife sheath after January 1st of 2022, and then information on two orders so then they got information on two orders for K-Bar knives that the wholesaler fulfilled last year. The first 360 unit order on March 8th and the second order for 480 units fulfilled on June 24th. So they wanted to know if Amazon was selling it, if eBay was selling it, who did K-Bar sell to first? That's how far back they went. They wanted to know who did Blue Ridge knives originally sell to. They got all the sellers. Then they got warrants for Amazon, eBay, Walmart, anybody that was selling this. And then they kept narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. This is a lot of work. And this is why I think that I do give a lot of credit to the police officer, Brett Payne, because he brought in the Moscow PD and he brought in, I'm sorry, the Moscow PD and Brett Payne brought in the Idaho State Police and brought in the FBI. This is so much work to go through all of this. So then they wanted a description from the Blue Ridge Knives of everybody that purchased it. They wanted the name, the payment method, the correspondence, 
for those sales. <sighs> that is a lot. They wanted the electronic internet records. I'm just going to skim through this a little bit. You guys can read it more in detail. They wanted the credit card records, including customers, applications, signature card, credit background investigations, conducted correspondence, monthly billing, and individual charge invoices, repayment records, disclosing dates, amounts, and method of repayment. So if you think that the you know there was somehow an accomplice that slid by with this wide of a net, I just say that if there was one, they would have, they would have got him. They would have rounded him up. I think he did act alone. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. They got correspondence between the customer and the financial institutions. This was a very wide net, very, very wide net. All application forms and other written documents completed by the customer certified checks, wire transfers. So any method of payment that they could think of, they got. Okay. So that is a very wide net. I'm not going to, if you guys want to go through, you can read this. I'm not going to read you the whole article. I just want to kind of just show you the overview of how we got to this place, how wide this started, and then how they narrowed it in. So all six, there were six applications were approved by the same judge distributed to the real trailer, real tailors and returned to investigators. This was all done before BK had been arrested. Remember the FBI came in with 30 agents, a lot of legwork, good old fashioned police work. So what we don't know is what, what all they found out, but we do know this. There are over 50 additional applications that have either been unsealed or fall into one of the two categories. We don't know the ones that are sealed. We just know the ones that are unsealed. And the first one involves financial information from banks and credit card companies about BK, specifically about Brian Kohlberger. The second one involves the online activity of BK, as well as the four alleged victims ranges from email, social media accounts to dating sites and message boards. Prosecutors filed paperwork and the judge approved these applications seeking a 90 day protection period. Once approved, all the applications were placed under seal. So these are just the ones we know about. So the case courts, case records show that the judge did agree to keep them at least nine of the filings under seal after the hearing from the prosecutors. So you can see, how, and this was done, a lot of this was done before he was ever arrested. So it wasn't just phone pings and it wasn't just his car on one CCTV camera. This was a lot of legwork and a lot of time. Now, his preliminary hearing was originally scheduled for June and it was expected to last a week. We were all waiting for that to happen, but that didn't happen. It did not happen. They went ahead and went to a grand jury with this. Let me grab the next one for you guys. And I'm going to check, check in with chat. We're going to talk about Dylan. We're going to talk about Dylan. <clears throat> okay, let's check in with chat. Um, uh, let's see where I left off. I hope I'm in the right spot. My Insane World of Terror says, My Insane World of Beauty says, Apple has always been known for not giving out. Oh, okay, I, I left off around there. Okay, so let me catch up. All right, so Kami. Kami says, make sure you hit the like button. Oh, make sure you hit the like button and please consider subscribing. Thank you, you guys. Yeah, please su subscribe to Reporter Room. Hit the like button if you find this to be helpful. Make sure you go through my other two live streams that I did. Uh, I did really detailed, in-depth, showed you receipts. Um, Mike says, I'm curious to how he's acting in jail. I'm sure he's calm, just trying to get away with it. I don't know. I would be like super nervous. Mamie says, I think he will be found guilty even if he's innocent. Well, I hope that, you know, that nobody wants that to happen. Um, we do want the right person behind bars. And Jazz says, he is studying all the criminology and law books, trying to find loopholes. Do you think this is, do you think it was... BK that put the grand jury up to this Ann Taylor filing three motions to try to get the grand jury indictment dismissed. Was that BK behind that or was that her? Cause she, I got to tell you, I think after getting 
turning the second motion down and telling the defense team that it was, quote, creative. That's what John, how Judge John Judge described it. He described the defense team motion as creative. I would think at that point that, you know, Ann Taylor would like be like, you know, maybe we should give it a rest. But instead, she came in with a third try, which he also said no. So I'm wondering if it's not her that's initiating these. Is it possible that BK himself is initiating these motions? What do you guys think? Renee says, I believe we will find documents out that BK met with the girls on an internet site. Well, we already do. We have. Yeah, you're right. We have uh, Christy Gonzalez and Steve Gonzalez showed it um, in an interview that they did. And also it has been backed up by another big mainstream TV. I did already go over through that on another live, so I'm not going to go through it again. Rest assured, justice will be done. Mike says he would be released today if there was anything exculpatory. Prosecution doesn't want him if he's innocent. No. I agree with that. They want the right guy. They went through a lot of work to make sure it was the right guy before they arrested him. Dylan and Bethany will both have to testify. Yeah, Dylan's an eyewitness, and I believe Bethany may be an eyewitness too. So Bethany reported seeing to the to the mirror, it was reported that Bethany saw a man that didn't have stuff on, and a lot of people felt like, oh no, this must be two different people. No, it's the same person. I believe he took, stood on a plastic bag, stripped off the coverall, stripped off everything, dropped it into a bag, and went out to the car, which was dextered out and had a change of clothes in there, went home, showered, and that's why the shower curtain was missing from his apartment, in my opinion. So that's a great point. Rebby, I think you're right. Anne's comments are ridiculous. I, I mean, she just needs to find that one person. She just needs one juror. That's all she needs. They probably did in the grand jury. Mike says, in the digital, it's the digital proof he'll never get off of. Yeah, and when you look at all the legwork that they did prior to arresting him, you can see why, how they got there. They had such a wide net, and this was all done before they arrested him. LB said, I have a feeling he first saw Maddie at the restaurant she worked at. You're talking about the Mad Greek, the number one rated vegan spot. And it wasn't a vegan restaurant. It does have meat, but it has, it's known for having really good vegan food. And in a small town like that, there probably aren't a lot of places. So it could be. And Jess says, Ann Taylor is using the delay tactics that she can. There will be loads more. Yeah, the defense tactic, I think, is going to be delay, delay, delay. And of course, the prosecution, they have the same information. Now, they have had it longer than the defense has had it, but they're like ready to go. Whereas the defense team, she wants to wait till summer of 2025. So that's a big, long chunk. Jewel says, has anyone heard that BK made his parents throw out all the pots and pans because the meat was cooked in them? His parents had to buy new ones. BK threw a tantrum. BK stated he just felt. Okay, no, the, the meat comment. I'm going to, let's talk, I am going to talk about the meat comment. That was made completely sep completely separately. The meat comment was, and the pots and pans incident, I believe happened with his aunt and uncle, not his parents. Jane says, I think all four should be tried at the same time. Mamie says, I think he would be sentenced and then cleared and pardoned in time. And the three identified, they're, okay, so the three identified DNA, they're not un unidentified. We don't know who they are. But I'm not buying that they're not identified because the defense team knew they were male. So how did they know they were male? Because it was tested, right? It was tested. So she just maybe isn't ready with her straw man. Um, Sherry says, yes. Horton says, do you think there's anything to the number matchings? 1122 address, 1122 date, one one, two address of the Amadeville, which took place on 12th. I have no idea. I have no idea. I've also heard that Elliot Rogers, who was an incel, that he liked the 13th also. And we still don't know what was on. Remember we read in the affidavit about that page 118? We still don't know so much. We don't even know what that book is. We don't know the name of the book yet. But I think the the seeing people as meat sacks, himself included, was a depersonalization. He was attributing it to his um, 
stuff. Crazy alibi. Yeah, exactly. Kayla says, I like to drive at night a lot. It's not an alibi. I'm sure you do. But I don't think that just by itself is going to be enough. So let's go through a couple things um, of what law enforcement does have. So they do have they do have proof that he purchased the K-Bar knife. They do have his DNA on that K-Bar knife sheath underneath and to the side of Maddie. We know Dylan saw a man dressed in black who's taller than 5 foot 10, has an athletic build, was but not muscular. He was wearing a mask, had bushy eyebrows. I do believe this description matches BK. I'm wondering if she's going to be able to identify him or if it was too dark. We know that a white Hyundai Elantra was seen circling the crime scene three times before parking. Finally, around 4.04 a.m. on November 13th of 2022, this Hyundai Elantra happened to be missing a front plate. And it's white and missing the front plate, just like the Hyundai Elantra owned by BK. And if you want to know about how we how we as, as a chat, as a group, zoomed in on that with law enforcement going through the affidavit that was in a live stream, I believe not last week, but the week before. We also know the same Hyundai Elantra was caught on CCTV cameras going to the crime scene from Pullman, Washington, where BK lived and returning back to Pullman after the crimes were committed. I believe they're going to line up the CCTV with pings. And then we know that his phone was switched off during the actual times of the crime and turned back on after the crimes were committed. Why did he turn off his phone? If you were with me last week, you know that in my opinion, his phone, he was connecting into Kaylee's Bluetooth, either purposefully or unintentionally. I believe it's more likely that it was purposeful than not, but it could be either. Um, and that's why he switched the phone off. Cause I think he, after talking about the woman that he got access to her cameras that he installed for her after staging a break-in just shows you how calculated and well thought out his plans were. So we're going to talk about Papa Rogers and um, Dylan in just a second. So um, I went through this already on the Papa Rogers and just showed you where the Papa Rogers did already mention BK. So the there's still just so much evidence that we don't know. We don't know who the hair samples belong to, where they match to the victims. The dark red stains that were identified as blood, was it his blood? The animal hair that was found, did that match Murphy the dog? Did it match Buddy the dog? And a single black glove were all found at BK's Washington apartment. And what was missing? The shower curtain was missing. The court documents show that two items from BK's Pullman, Washington apartment did test positive for blood. And I, it could have been his own blood from that, that night. The two items were a mattress cover on the bed and an uncased pillow, both of which had visible reddish brown stains. Now the court documents don't re reveal who the blood belongs to. We don't know that yet. But authorities found possible human hair strands and a computer. Law enforcement also confiscated a Glock 22. Remember Papa Rogers at, talked about a gun? A, a 40 caliber handgun, an empty magazines, a Smith & Wesson pocket knife, and a third tailor cutlery knife in a leather sheath. On the same day, law enforcement searched BK's 2015 white Hyundai Elantra and emptied it of its contest. They found gloves, a shovel, goggles, floor mats, boots, and a reflective vest. Now, maybe the shovel was just, you know, to dig the car out in case of snow. It could also have been used to bury evidence. I don't know. What do you think? You guys are, I have really smart people in the chat. If you think that it was used to bury evidence, just put uh, evidence. If you think it was used to shovel out snow, just put snow in the chat. <coughs> we'll just do an informal poll. So we don't know what happened to that shower curtain. We don't know which of the victim's IDs were found inside a glove, inside a box at his parents' Albrightsville, Pennsylvania house. So we're deep diving into the warrants if you're just joining us. And we're also going to be talking about Dylan Mortensen observations uh, to determine it was her observations that determined the initial 
timeline, which was 4 a.m. until 425. That since this is according to the affidavit that since been narrowed down to 404 a.m. because we see that Hyundai Elantra circling, doing almost what looks like a three point turn and parking, finally parking. So an anonymous Idaho law enforcement source told the New York Post that the eight hour gap in reporting the crime has been something that, that they have puzzled over because they don't know if Dylan was intoxicated, if she was just afraid. Um, you know, and so Dr. Judith F. Joseph, this is a clinical assistant professor of psychiatry in New York, told NBC News that a traumatic shock response is not uncommon. You know, even in nature, animals freeze, right? They tell you if you encounter, encounter certain types of predators like a bear to play dead, right? Just freezing is a, is nature's, isn't natural response. When your body's in shock and you think something bad is going to happen, your adrenaline surges and your sym sympathetic, your fight or flight system takes off. You could experience a frozen state. So I think when he was going by the door, she froze and startled. And then she decided that, you know, she has four female roommates. Ethan was spending the night, you know, it was during a pandemic. So wearing a mask wouldn't have been that unusual. And she just thought there's a strange man. I don't know who it is in the house, but I'm going to close and lock my door. I don't think she thought that this guy is doing away with all my roommates right now. I don't think she thought that. And I, and if you look at the time of around when she looked, peeked out the third time to when Ethan's friend stopped by and discovered the crime scene, that is around eight hours. That's a normal amount that she was sleeping. And if you you know, think, oh, the roommates had to know. Well, in the Jody Arias, Travis Alexander case, Travis Alexander's roommates were in the house with Travis for days, plural days. And they did smell something strange coming out of his room after like, I'm sure the second day it had to smell. It's Arizona. It's hot. They just thought it was rotten food. They didn't know what it was. And that was a very, very graphic crime scene. Lots of blood that she left behind. So his roommates were there. So, you know, I don't think that it, you know, people are saying, oh, she should be charged with not reporting a crime scene. Not if she didn't know it. So let's talk about Dylan more for a second. And I have two other packages besides this one to go through after this. We'll see how the time works. Okay. So let's talk about Dylan uh, they were calling her DM in the affidavit and the F this is the affidavit that we saw that was released to us on January 5th of, of 2023 of last year it says DM did see, she did see him and that the affidavit says she froze and then locked her bedroom door. So it's a good thing she didn't run out because she's here for people who are saying she didn't do the right thing. She survived. So she did the right thing. She, she lived. She survived him. And, and to me, that is the only crime I can find. And the same people that are like, you know, yelling that she needs to be arrested are the same ones telling me in the comment section that BK is innocent until proven guilty. And I said this last week, where's your grace for Dylan? She didn't break into the house. She lived there. She was the youngest roommate. She was 19 years old. She didn't know there was a crime scene. They didn't call all their friends over. That's just all nonsense that's been put out by, I don't know who put that out. But let's go through, let's talk about Dylan. And then we're going to talk about Bethany Funk. So in part, authorities used Dylan's observations to determine that the homicides occurred. They got the timeline from her. And she had a very rough interrogation. I heard it was rough. I heard it was not nice. Um, and, you know, it was, it was traumatizing for her but they needed to rule out the roommates An anonymous Idaho law enforcement told the New York post that the eight hour gap in reporting has been something that they've been puzzling over and they don't know if it's intoxication or fear, but you know, she, I'm sure she didn't think that, that that had happened, but you know, it would have been great if she had gone out after a half hour and just look to see what was going on. But you know, she was 19 years old, so she didn't do that. She went to sleep and who knows, maybe she had taken a Tylenol PM. Maybe she took an Ambien. Maybe she had a few drinks. I don't know. 
Now, the other surviving roommate, Bethany, is not featured in the affidavit like Dylan is, right? And I feel so bad for Dylan because all this statement came out about her being frozen shock phase. And everything could be attributed to that eight hour gap. Oh, friends came over. Sorority people came over. They, none of that is true. How the crime scene was found was Ethan's friend had plans with him. And when his Ethan didn't answer his phone or show up for their plans, he went over. And I guess he went inside the house, but didn't bring his phone in with him. So he woke up one of the roommates. I'm going to assume it was Dylan because he found Ethan on the second floor. That's who found the crime scene. It was Ethan's friend that found the crime scene. And the person that passed out, that was probably one of the roommates whose phone was used to call 911. So neither Mortensen or Bethany says were, were attacked by the perpetrator. Um, and people have like attributed all kinds of stuff. She's been stuck under a gag order right after the affidavit came out, this gag order went into effect. So, um, I don't know. I just think, I just think it's really sad because who's standing up for Dylan, the father of the victim. You want to, if you think that Steve for one second would support somebody that he believed did this to Kaylee and Maddie and Zana and Ethan, no, he is very, very, very hard line on this. And he's asking, you've got to remember these two girls were so upset that when they went outside after seeing this, one passed out and the other one was so hyperventilating that the message wasn't clear enough for the operator. So just think about that. Her only crime is that she lived. Would it have been good if she would have called? Sure. So Bethany was on the first floor. We were initially told by law enforcement that both roommates were on the first floor. This is prior to arresting BK because, of course, they don't want the, the criminal to come back and, and go after an eyewitness. So the affidavit says that both surviving roommates were interviewed by police. So they were interviewed and ruled out. So I'm just hoping we can let the roommates rest in peace now. Bethany told police that she had seen Chapin, that's Ethan, and Zana out that night at the Sigma Chi house from 9 p.m. to 1.45. Maddie and, and Kaylee were at a local bar that would be the corner club, and then they went to the grub truck um, before arriving home at around 1.56. By 4 a.m., all of the people in the house were in the rooms, the roommates told police, according to the affidavit. So if you think they didn't get to bed till after four o'clock, the two roommates, then eight hours later, it would just be the amount of time you slept. It wasn't days. So I just want to like, just say that I feel bad for the roommates. I just really do. Cause I know that they already got put through a big interrogation by law enforcement to find out what they knew. The affidavit describes various sounds that we already uh, went through in my live streams that I did with you guys on this. And according to the affidavit, Dylan was, woke up at 4 a.m. to what sounded like Kaylee playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms. Now, maybe BK went in the room looking for Kaylee. He may not have been expecting Kaylee and Maddie to be in the room together, right? So he was the one in there with the dog. And then she heard a person, she thought it was Kaylee, say something to the effect of there's someone here. This voice could have been Xana who was probably on TikTok when the murders happened around 4, 12 a.m. So, and then at 4, 17 a.m., a security camera picked up a distorted audio of what, quote, sounded like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. This is according to the affidavit. And a dog could also be heard barking numerous times starting at 4, 17 a.m. So was this Murphy alerting or was this another dog in the neighborhood? Mortensen, this is Dylan, told police she opened her door for the third and final time after she heard the crying and she saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking toward her. She described the figure as 5'10 or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows. And I bet you Ann Taylor is going to keep those eyebrows trimmed trimmed all right let's let me check in with chat 
because I don't want to get too behind. We still have some more stuff to get into. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Papa Roger, a little bit more detail. Um, I think I left off here. And Jeff says he made a relative buy a new pots and pans. Yeah, that was, I believe, aunt and uncle that did that. And that may be related to the eating issue, the disorder that I talked about earlier. And not have anything to do with this. Um, Tara says, I think they have pictures of him in the car. I would not be shocked if that's why Ann Taylor had to put him in the car. They're going to, they may either have photos of him in the car or that tag, the tag of the car. Mike says he's seen and it's alone. That's why they admitted he was out driving alone. So he's talking about Ann Taylor had to put him in the car that night. Rebbe says, I think BK was trying to be tactical when he asked if anyone else had been arrested when he was arrested. Probably. Yeah, probably. But I bet, you know, law enforcement went ping, just like the rest of us did, which is why they had such a wide net and they were narrowing it down. And for somebody who says that they wanted to exonerate themselves, he didn't come forward and give his DNA, did he? He was sorting his garbage separate from his parents with gloves on putting his bag in neighbor's trash cans. And then when he was arrested, law enforcement had to get a cheek swab. They had to get a court order to get the cheek swab. He didn't volunteer it. They had to get a court order. So if you wanted to just rule yourself out, a lot of the guys came in and gave their DNA. But he didn't. Long drives for what? Yeah, that's the, that's a, that's the million dollar question, right, Ozzy? And the other question I have is if he, okay, he liked to take long drives. Did he continue to take long drives after November 13th of 2022? Did he continue those long drives when he got to Albrightsville, Pennsylvania? When, or did the long drives just all stop once he was, once the crimes were done? Did the long drives stop or did he continue to take long drives? James thinks the long drives stopped. And it's okay if people have different opinions, y'all. You could, you don't. It's okay. All, all opinions are welcome as long as they're sharing them respectfully. It's okay. We're not all going to agree. We do we have to all agree on everything? I mean, how do we learn from each other if we don't listen to each other? So let's just take in what everybody's saying. It's okay if not everybody agrees, and all opinions are welcome as long as people are being respectful. So let's not get into like arguing back and forth with each other in the chat. Um, I mean, you can a little bit if you have, if you want to just, you know, sh share your opinion, that's fine. Uh, or push back on something a little bit, but I wouldn't get like into a, like a knockdown drag out about it. Um, Mike says lawyers are always looking for a snag. Yeah. And Ann Taylor, she just needs one. She needs a straw man, someone to blame this on a pat, you know, someone to, to, to do the straw man, right? She needs a straw man. That's one thing she's going to be looking around. Who can I use? Um, and she just needs one juror. It stopped, it stopped parked car in the garage. It's manipulation. Pam says, yes, it's only, yep. He enjoyed long drives in the ice and snow. It only takes one juror. Yeah. Jewel said, I think it was his aunt and uncle who said that about the pots and pans. Yeah, I think so too. And Maybe it's just asking for privacy. No problem, Amy. Jory says, although super weird, how the town of Moscow ID, the campus, the world is just so safe since BK was nabbed. Annoying already that BK, the BK suffragists, the, the B, I call them the BK apologists. And it, I don't have a problem if somebody, you know, isn't sure or on the fence, but, you know, I guess where I just kind of, feel like a little bit heartbroken is when I see the very same people that are saying there's no way he could do it. And I think even if I had a video and I don't, but even if I had a video to show him doing it, there would be some other reason why he didn't do it. But those same people want the roommates arrested when they haven't been indicted for anything. They haven't been charged with anything. They're just being scapegoated for clicks and views. And it's just not right. You guys deserve the truth. It's not fair to the roommates. It's also not fair to you. You guys deserve 
credible information. And that's what I'm trying to bring you. So you can make up your own mind of what you think happened that night. We're not all going to agree and that's okay. You guys are super smart. You're very capable of deciding for yourselves what you think happened that night. And I'm not here to tell you one way or the other. I'm just going to bring you everything that I can find, all the information, and then you guys can look through everything, look at it at your leisure, replay it. Leave me comments in the comment section below if you have any questions, if you agree, if you don't agree, it's okay. Just all I ask is just be respectful about it. That's all. Um, Jane said, I just think Ann Taylor, oh no, I think she's very, very bright. I, she, I think she's very bright. She's been doing this a long time. She just needs one juror. So she, her job is to, you know, to, to get reasonable doubt. She's going to advocate for BK. He's getting a great, he has a great defense team. He really does. I, I mean, I think she's doing good work, but I do get frustrated when she stands up and says, I don't know how law enforcement got to my client. And I'm thinking, wow, because we, you guys and I did a did a live stream together and we were able to go through the affidavit step by step and see how law enforcement tracked him down and, and narrowed it down to just him, just like we're doing now with the warrants, how they narrowed it down. It was a really wide net and it just got narrower and narrower till it landed on him. Still believe others are involved. Well, I think that if there were, don't you think that with the wide net that was cast in the warrants, and I would encourage you guys to go back and read all, read through all the, the details of all the warrants. I just didn't want to read you an article. Uh, I don't think that's like a very good live stream is for me to just sit there and read to you. But I just wanted to get the, get the bullet points in, and then you guys could go back and read the articles and then decide for yourself. And if you think that there's other people, you know, please tell me why you think that. And, um, you know, I, I learned from you guys too. You guys leave me great comments. It was his aunt, not his parents. Amelia says those types of prior incidents getting fired because of complaints, specifically young female students fits an incel psyche profile. Yeah, it does. May May says, yes, right to Jane. Pam says my keyboard or maybe my fingers went nuts. <laughs> I can relate, Pam. Jade says, good luck getting a grand jury indictment tossed. I, I don't think the judge is going to throw that out. I just don't. Uh, I think they, you know, they've tried three times. I'm sure they'll try four. And, you know, as many times as BK wants them to try, they'll try. Um, all right. We're going to dig into Papa Rogers for in just a second. Mike says, Judge smirks at how ridiculous Ann sounds. This judge wants to move on, but Ann is just going to drag it out. So BK can't complain. And fight. Well, we want him to have a fair trial. We want him to get good representation. We want a good lawyer. We And he has a great lawyer in Ann Taylor. So she is going to drag it out. I mean, that's her job. Um, so let's talk about Papa Roger a little bit. Okay, so, um, whoop. okay, so as I shared with you a few minutes ago, Papa Roger had almost psychic-like predictions on this case, um, and I think one of the biggest smoking guns. And if you're just joining me, um, one of the big things of why, I mean, the photograph that the avatar that was chosen is to me very similar. It's not BK, but it it is very similar. Um, and it's also a soldier, but this, this, uh, post from November, there's a couple, there's three, there's two posts from November 30th, but this post in particular, let me get to it. This post November 30th. Now, mind you, this was before, this was well before we knew that that knife sheath had been found underneath into the side of Maddie law enforcement knew it was there. They found it that day. They officer Brett Payne found it that day underneath the side and Maddie with another law enforcement officer with him. They found it together, but we, the public didn't know about it. So how did Papa Roger know about this of the evidence released? He writes the M weapon. I'm watching my words has been consistent as a large fixed blade knife. This leads me to believe they found the sheath. This evidence was released prior to autopsies. So this is either a really good guesser. It's either a member of law enforcement 
or it was BK in the chat with us. And I was in this chat room. I had no idea that we were interacting with, with law enforcement potentially or potentially the person who committed these crimes. And he's innocent until proven guilty. Let's go forward to the next one. Also, November 30th, I believe the killers came from the high side of the house. They were covered in blood after the attack. So he's got one and then plural for two. So, and the high side of the house would have been that second story that was up on the hill, right? That's the high side of the house. The ground floor and, this, and uh, the front half of the second floor would be the low side. The high side would be the second floor and third floor. We know from Bethany, we know from Dylan that she saw this man dressed in black exiting through the second floor patio doors. I'm assuming that he went out the same way he came in. We know from Bethany that she saw a man stripped down with nothing on at the second floor patio door. So I believe he took everything off, stripped down, put it all in a plastic bag, got into the car, which I believe was kitted out. I believe it had plastic on the seats, on the, you know, on the steering wheel. It wouldn't be that much space to Dexter out. And I believe that's why his car was offline for over an hour and a half before he arrived at the 1122 King Road house. So it's interesting that Papa Roger knew this on November 30th, because we didn't know that. We were all speculating and theorizing, but we didn't know. And this is the other one that just really jumps out at me is the a knife is a very risky if you weapon if you know you are going to do away with four people i'm watching my words <clears throat> do we think this person had another weapon such as a scun gun or a gun well bk was found with a gun that is it was found with a gun when he was arrested so I think that, and that was on November, on December 30th, there's 20th. There's other ones too. If you want me to just do a timeline on Papa Rogers, let me know. I will do a video that's just about him. And you guys can let me know in the comment section below. Let me catch up with chat. Jory says the docs I saw accidentally had the purchase S. Uh, SKS, I don't know what that is, and everything. Reba says a one. We're doing an informal polling. Lead with Love says, I just want to see more of his behavior. Is he just zenning his way through this? I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. He could be just enjoying the coverage. I mean, the face, look on his face. He could just be happy because he's not in jail at this moment. But we've had so many pictures. I think this is why Ann Taylor didn't want close-ups of his face. We have so many pictures of him just, you know, smiling and looking very relaxed in the courtroom. Now, he could just be so happy he's not sitting in jail and he gets to be with other people that he just feels happy to be there. Um, I don't know. Um, Jade says, I agree to disagree. All opinions are appreciated. Yeah, we please... You can agree with, disagree with each other. That's fine. Just, just do it respectfully. Think about joining my channel. Oh, thanks. I do have great member. Yeah, we do members only videos and members only live streams for the members. And you get a check mark next to your name in the chat. If you see members with blue check marks, red check marks, green check marks, these are our channel members. And so, yeah, it's just, I think it's just like $2.99 to become a channel member. And we have, Lots of videos that are just for you guys. And we do interactive chats where I, you know, we talk to each other too. So it's, it's nice. It's a really nice community if you want to come be part of us. And your name will appear in all my videos. Pam says, being educated and being smart is not necessarily the same thing. True. You can be book smart and not street smart. You could be smart intellectually, but not, but socially very awkward, right? John says, I remember reading a book by an FBI profiler. I think he called them stressors. All right. Hey, Sabex, I'm glad you're here. Some of this is just people arguing in the chat. I'm going to just. Mike says, Brian had the, had a right to a trial, but they, they've solved it. 
Well, he's in, he ha does have the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. So he does, he, you know, he's presumed innocent. Just want to make that clear. But I know a lot of people feel like that the prosecution has a very strong case. I agree. I think they do have a very strong case. And I can see why a grand jury indicted him on this. Um, spoken heart stillness has found an ID or some kind of card of one of the victims. Yeah, an ID of one belonging to one of the victims was found inside a glove, inside a box at BK's parents' Albrightsville, Pennsylvania house where he was arrested. So, yeah, people were saying, oh, there weren't connections to the victims. Well, there are. There's multiple connections. And I went through those in prior live streams, so I'm not going to do it again today. But I've gone through the connections. I've showed the receipts. I showed you guys the proof. Angela V says, having not found the weapon used, can we really pin it all on Brian? I find the sheath suspect due to it being clean. Who said it was clean? Who said it was clean? It was found underneath and to the side of Maddie. I don't think it was clean. I don't think anyone's ever said it was clean. And only having Brian's touch DNA on a very small area. Well, that's all. I mean, if he wiped it down prior to going in the house and was holding it with gloves, you know, but they, I don't know. I don't think it's just going to be that DNA alone that's going to sink his ship. I think it's going to be cumulative. It's going to be a circumstantial case, but they're going to have receipts showing that he bought. We already know they have the receipts showing that he bought the Amazon. Cable. They bought the knife from Amazon. They're going to show that he purchased it on Amazon. They're going to show receipts of how he paid. Um. And then that DNA is one in octillion, so it doesn't match anybody else. And then his car going to and coming from, I believe they, those phone pings leading up to the crime, the fact that his phone was turned off right during the crime, but then switched back on while he's still in the car heading home. So I think it's going to be cumulative. I don't think it's just going to be one thing. So I hope I've answered your question. Um, Let's see. Lead with love says, off topic, PCA North Carolina people having wins. Uh, be careful out there, guys. Be safe out there. Mike says, unspoken, multiple IDs found, no idea whose they are. One allegedly found from someone, One of the it was one of the victims at the 1122, but not confirmed. But police said it was, it was Dateline. Yeah, and it was multiple sources reported it out, multiple journalistic sources. Angela says, we've been told the scene was extremely red, so I would like to know how the sheath managed to stay clean. Again, who said it was clean? I haven't seen anything that said that knife sheath was clean. I, I doubt it's clean, and I haven't seen anybody, anybody report that it was clean. So I don't know where that came from. If you have a source for that, let me know. I'll check it out. Um, but it, there's no evidence in the affidavit or any of the information that I've been able to find that says that knife sheath was clean. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, and Jess says, BK did this alone. No way was there accomplice. I think if there was, I think law enforcement, because they cast such a wide net, I think they would have the accomplice. Have you seen <coughs> Catherine Knight? She used to work in an albator and used her skills. She was obsessed with knives and cutting. Interesting. Bob says, Oh my gosh. Guys, please don't do that in the chat. Please don't do that. Just leave, just leave it. We got a one from Kami, a one from Jane, a two from Kim, one from Pam, one from Enjaz, one from I'm perfectly imperfect. Hey, good to see you. Florence, hey, nice to see you, Florence. A one. Tara says a two. Ozzy says one. Miranda says two. Mike says, yep. Yeah. They want to move the jurors. Whoop. Oh, man, I just lost my, I just lost where I was. They want to move the jurors. Well, the change of venue. Yeah, they do. And, you, you know, I, I, I understand why. If BK was innocent, he would have been screaming it from the rooftops, not sitting in jail all quiet. Yeah, and maybe provided the DNA sample instead of making law enforcement go get a court order to get his DNA. I would want to exonerate myself and prove I didn't do it. Two, Pam says one, NJ says, NJ says one, 
Oh, I think I did these. Hold on. Let me scroll down. Okay. I think I got everybody's now. Oh, a couple more. Hey, yes. Hey, Lolo. Hi, Robert. Good to see you guys. Okay. Jane doesn't think a change of venue is going to help. I tend to agree with you, Jane. I don't think a change of venue is going to help because this case is not local. It's national. Um, but if Ann Taylor thinks it will help, I think they could just as easily bring jurors in from out of town. Um, Arlene believes he will get a fair trial where he is. Not everyone knows about the case. Lynn Ann says, Ann must know he's guilty because she is already thinking about mitigation. Oh, okay. So, and looking for mental illness in his family tree. Well, that's, it's a two part, because it's a capital case, she has to be preparing for mitigation. I, I talked about this last week. I, I know some people did feel like, and I can understand why you did think that way, Lynn Ann, and a lot of people felt the same way you did. For me, and just, this is just my opinion. I didn't take that as that she thought he was guilty. I took that as more that this is a two-part case. It's a capital case. So she has to has to prepare for the second part of this case in the event that, you know, she doesn't get one juror or more than one juror to, you know, she doesn't get the not guilty. So she has to prepare for, for mitigation. But what I did find so interesting, Lillian, tell me what you think about this. I thought it was so interesting that she couldn't find, she said she couldn't had trouble finding people who wanted to come forward. She can't force people to come forward and, and testify about what a great guy he is. So she's having trouble, trouble finding people. And she said she was having trouble finding experts. So my question to that is, is she having trouble finding experts or is she having trouble finding experts who would testify to what she wants them to testify to? I don't know. What do you guys think? And Jazz says the prosecution said in court that this case is no nationally and internationally very high profile. Yeah, it is. Sabic says, one, this case is not exclusive to Moscow. We all know about this case. Is he next going to argue he can't have a fair trial anywhere at all? I don't know. And I'm I don't know what the judge is gonna, gonna rule on that. June Cuss says, if I hope I said your name correctly, if police have proof BK purchased this knife, they do have proof. Um, was the knife found during the apartment search or did Brian say where the knife he supposedly purchased is located? No, he didn't. They know, to my knowledge, they don't have the knife. They have proof that he bought a K-Bar knife. They have proof that he bought it on Amazon, but they don't know where the knife is that, that we know of. Unless there's something we don't know. And there's a lot we don't know. We haven't heard the 911 call. We don't know who the human hairs belong to. We don't know who the animal hairs belong to. There's a lot we don't know. Jennifer says two. Mike says one. Mike says, even if people know this case, people will follow instructions. The trial will be fair. Yeah, I think so too. Trina says number one. Unspoken says, I don't think the place matters. This case is known worldwide. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, Tara says, personally, I think they have everything they need if it's a capital case. If they didn't, I don't think it would be a capital case. <sighs> yeah, I would think that if you were going to charge this as a capital case, you would want to have all your ducks in a row. And it sounds like they got a lot in the row just from going through the warrants with you guys tonight. It's, you know, what do you guys think? To me, it seems like they had a big wide net and they just slowly worked their way through with good old fashioned police work and narrowed it down to who bought that knife. Florence said, no, he was hiding his DNA. Yeah, I think he wiped off the knife sheath. Ken says, who cleans their car with bleach? I, I agree. I don't think because bleach is going to take the color out of your fabric. It's, you know, it's, it's not just, I mean, normally you would just do like armor all or something like that or Windex. Tara says she agree. And Jazz says, what was he doing with the trash shows he was very DNA aware. Well, sure. Yeah, you're right. Great point. Tara says, I don't want to walk to my own trash can much less than neighbor's trash can, right? And that those houses were spread out. If you look at the house, it was spread out. 
Holly says cleaning the car with bleach is very suspect. I do too. Let's see. Bell City. Jane J says she thinks that the bleach is a giveaway. Hey, Bell City girl. Bell City girl says there's always people that never listen to the news. I would not move the trial. He's cost the taxpayers enough already. Bob says, I know I've only cleaned my car with bleach when there was lots of DNA evidence I needed to clean away. All right. Thanks for that, Bob. And Mike says, lead, right, lots, laughs. Cops almost ran him over because he's walking down the road. My dad would have called the cops on me for using his water. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Okay, I'm glad we can get some a little lighthearted because this is a heavy night. We are going through a lot of heavy stuff tonight. Sherry says defense is going to object and argue all the way. Of course, yes, and I and I hope they do because that's that's their job. That's their job. Arlene says not only cleaning car with bleach, but doing it all at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I think the wearing the gloves and cleaning your car with bleach in the middle of the night is is just again it's not in and of itself going to put him in jail it's going to be circumstantial he owned the knife his dna was on the knife sheath found underneath into the side of maddie his phone was pinging in the areas his his car is on cctv cameras going to and coming back from the crime scene uh i think it's going to be i think it's going to be circumstantial case by case Piece by piece, brick by brick. Holly puts, says one. Kami says, I don't think his ego would allow him to work with anyone. He likes things done his way and wouldn't want to risk it. Yeah, and a lot of people have asked, well, why didn't? Why would he take his own car? Well, Ted Bundy drove his own car. He drove his own car. And he would go in broad daylight with his Volkswagen and pretend he had a broken arm or he was injured in some way and, and get a young woman to go back to his car where he would kidnap her, but he would, you know, lure a young woman back to his car. Yeah. Please give me a thumbs up. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't subscribed, please do like share, feel free to share this on your social media. Maybe, you know, somebody that, um, has, doesn't have all this information yet. Jane says, I think he acted alone too. I don't think he had close friends. And he was back that morning. Hey, Jackie, good to see you. Holly said, sorry, got kicked out of chat and was lost somewhere on these YouTube streets. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I'm glad you made it back. Lead with Love says, Jose's opening statement, I'm sure she's talking about Jose Baez from the Casey Anthony trial, would not be allowed in many states. It was spaghetti on the wall. Well, he needed a straw man, right? And it worked. Casey was found not guilty. It worked. He did his job. Sherry said, I think he went back for it. She's talking about the knife sheath, although he did not have the nerve to enter to get to the sheath. I wonder if he did go back in, if he did enter. And that's, remember, neighbors said that front door was open, you guys. Remember, people, if you've been on this case from the beginning, like I have, then you know that at the very beginning, that it was reported out that neighbors said that they saw the front door open that morning. Well, imagine if you realized you left that knife sheath behind. I'm wondering, and then his phone was pinging outside that house at 9 a.m. I can't think of really any other reason of why he would be back there so soon. So I think he did chance it. I think he did chance it and, and run back in really quick. And I'm wondering if that's when that van's shoe print was left, was not on the first pass where he probably had booties on, but on that second try when he went back to get that knife sheath. I don't know. Could he have picked up a, you know, a human hair or dog hair at that point and brought it back in? I don't know. Oop. Jewel says superior attitude will not allow others to share in his sick glory. Jane says she feels bad for George Anthony. I do too. I mean, imagine losing your grandchild in such a horrible way, finding her the way that they did, and then being blamed by your own daughter. Connie said, you're right. I'm from Canada. Mike says, 
Sherry Wright, I think he looked, maybe ACVS was debating and he just wanted to see why it was on, on the news. Yeah, yeah, it could have just been he was coming back to see if he, you know, his circus that he created. It could have been that. I don't know what EB and DR is. I'm not really sure. I'm not real. I'm not sure how to respond to you there. Amelia says all civilly expressed opinions are encouraged and welcome. You can sail. Our mod is nicely asking people to just bring it down a notch in the chat. Okay. Tara is here. Hey, Tara. Good to see you. I love you too. This is another Tara. Chat is glitching and lagging. I need to keep refreshing the chat. Minnie's here. Hi, Minnie. Minnie says, Amazon is going to stop giving law enforcement ring cams. Well, they may, you know, may be getting a lot of subpoenas for their stuff. Maybe they don't like it. And it's okay if we if you guys don't all agree with each other or you do agree with some people in chat and others. It's okay. Just everybody be please be nice to each other. Just express your opinion nicely. I'm imperfectly perfect says yes, I think BK has a large role in everything the defense is doing. Oh, Pam Davidson became a member. Let me see if I can find that really quick. I didn't see that come up. I must be so behind on chat, and I am. <laughs> Welcome, Pam. I'm looking to see if you're still in the chat. You might have left already. This is Pam Davidson. Welcome to the to becoming a member to Reporter Room. I haven't seen your membership come through yet, but I am behind on the chat. Leslie says, we will know more during trial. Yeah, there's so much we don't know, Leslie. You're right. Amelia says, does that model year Elantra have a black box? We don't know. Some do and some don't. I looked it up. I did want to know the answer because I think that's such a great question. Um, some do and some don't. So it depends on the model. But if that has a black box, that would be really helpful too. That'd be another reason Ann Taylor has to put him in that car. Ten, Ken Tucker says, young college students after a weekend night sleep late on Sunday. So that was the case of Dylan and Bethany. You're right. I, I totally agree with that. Yes, said I could sleep all day in college after a night of party. And 19 is so young. Yeah, they didn't get to bed. I mean, you think about it, she looked out the third time. It was after 4 a.m. So she didn't even get a full eight hours. And at 19, you know, they probably sleep nine, 10 hours. But in this case, it was only eight hours. And if you think, go back to like the Jody Arias case, which was also a very graphic crime scene. He was in the house for days, plural days. Brian says he definitely buried everything initially, and then he had three weeks to move, burn, or whatever. Oh, wow. That's an interesting theory. This is why I love reading your comments. I always get, like, something that I never thought about. Kami says, I think so, but I do not believe he has that model. Yeah, we don't know. Michael says, I hope the buried evidence can be located. Did Walmart warrant have to do with the receipt that was found for the Dickies coveralls? Yeah, that Dickies coveralls, I believe that was a monkey suit, right? That was the monkey suit that I think he, that he wore. We don't know. We don't know because we haven't seen, we've seen, it's only 60 of these warrants have been unsealed. There's more. And Molly says, listen, folks. Bethany and Dylan are victims. There's only 20 minutes from the time that, that the victims were found until 9 one was called was Ethan's friend and two other triplets and the roommates. They are victims. Thank you for that, Molly. I agree. I'm glad they're alive. I'm glad they survived this. Pam says, yep. Well, how would we react with such a discovery? And Arlene says, BK definitely had plenty of time to discard all the evidence before he was arrested. Well, what we we talked about that nine hour detour that he and his dad took, right? Driving from Pullman, Washington to Albrightsville, Pennsylvania should have looked something like this, right? Just should have been. But instead, it did one of these. There was a nine hour detour from Pullman, Washington to Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. And his dad, when he was asked why they took a nine hour detour, he told one person it was because of the weather, and another person he said he didn't know. I believe. 
He didn't know. But would you take a nine hour detour for weather? I could see like pulling over for a day or maybe an hour or two hours out of your way for weather, but not nine hours. So it does make me wonder if he was discarding stuff along the way. I don't know. Maybe he knew he was being surveilled. Remember he had those two traffic stops with his dad in the car and they said, where are you going? He, his dad said they were going to Pennsylvania. And what does BK say? He says, we're going for Thai food. Again, in and of itself, not much, but just adding another piece. Why, why Thai food? Mike says, with tracking of the phone, I'm hoping they find the evidence. I don't know if they will or not, but I think they'll have enough of the other stuff. Jewel said, we can say what we may do in a situation like this, but no one truly knows how one would react. No. And, you know, 19 years old. Chasing Stardust says, old enough to party, drink alcohol, not old enough to call the police. Well, what? Let me just say, let me just put this to the chat. Let me just ask you guys. Critic, put your critical thinking hat on for a second. Because I, I understand why the, the, the eight hour gap bothers people so much. I, I get it. Okay. It bothered me too a lot. Still bothers me. I still want an explanation for it. But just put your critical thinkers cap on for a second. You're 19 years old. You've had been out doing, I don't know what, maybe you've had a couple of drinks. And you live with five single young women. You see a strange man in the house that's in the middle of a pandemic and he has a mask on. Do you immediately call the police or do you think one of my roommates had a friend over or a guy, you know, spent the night or was spent a few hours here, however you want to look at it. Would you immediately jump to all my friends have been done away with? I don't think, you know, tell me what, what you, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you would think in that with critical thinking, thinking like a 19 year old, what would you think? Would you close the door and lock it? There's a strange man in the house. I don't know who it is. I'm, I'm irritated. I'm being woken up. I wish I wasn't, you know, in this house, but I'm the youngest one. I don't want to bother my roommates. Or if you just see a strange man, do you immediately call the police? But maybe he was just spending the night or spending a few hours with one of your friends. It was a party house. We saw police officers responding to the house for party calls when the girls weren't even home. So I don't know. I just, I think context matters, but what do you guys think? And Jess says she thinks the two girls should be left alone. If they're traumatized enough. Kami says, I think that as each day passed, he thought he was golden up until he got pulled over. And then perhaps he realized he wasn't as smart as he thought. Well, th that's where maybe I should go through the rest of those Papa Rogers mes messages because they do become more frantic in their tone. And he goes from being a know-it-all at the beginning to being more trying to throw people off as we get closer and closer to when he got arrested. So maybe we should go through those. Maybe I should do a video on that. All right. Um, I do want to just thank my producers. If you would like to be a producer, um, just hit the join button and our awesome channel members. If you want your name to show up in all of my videos and live stream and have a check mark next to your name in the chat, feel free to join as a channel member. We would love to have you. So glad you guys are here. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And um, be on the lookout. I have a new video coming out on Tuesday on the Brian Kohlberger case. Subscribe and I will see you next time. Love you. Bye.